church. This morning I'm here to let you know whatever thing you may be going through, our God is bigger than it. The title of my song this morning says you're bigger, it's bigger than every situation. COVID-19 has proved that our Lord is bigger, isn't it? So this morning as I sing, I want you to believe whatever it is, sickness, financial issues, just believe God is bigger. Amen. You're great, oh, be 
go through any challenge in front of us. At this time, we're going to read our scripture for today. And I'm going to ask you all to stand for the reading of the Word of God. So our reading this morning is from Joshua chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. And this is what it says. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. You know, I've heard people every once in a while say that they feel like God is silent in their life, but God is never, God is only silent when your Bible is closed. Um, and uh, chances are there's something he's trying to tell you in his wonderful words of life. So let's, uh, we're going to sing uh, wonderful words of life and turn your eyes upon Jesus.
On this Independence Day weekend, let us bow our heads in prayer and lift up our nation and pray for all those in authority this morning and for our nation. Bow in prayer with me, please. Our Father, our God, our help in ages past on this Independence Day weekend. You have been our help in the past and you are our hope for years to come. We give you grateful thanks, Father, on this anniversary of the birthday of our nation this weekend. We thank you, Father, for the priceless blessings of liberty that were won by our ancestors. We pray that you would stir up within us as your children, Father, we pray a new appreciation for the liberty that we enjoy. In this land of the free, as imperfect as it is at times, in our polarized nation, Father, even among our leaders and our nation's people, give us a greater readiness as your children to live out what liberty is about. For it was freedom that Christ set us free. Your word says, you called us to freedom through the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Freedom from all sin, freedom from death itself. Only it says in your word that we not turn our freedom into an opportunity for our sinful flesh. But through love that we serve one another. Make us that church that serves one another and serves our fellow man and for the whole law remembering is fulfilled in one word you shall love your neighbor as yourself make us that people father in jesus name we pray amen take your bibles and turn back to joshua in the first chapter this morning we're looking at joshua and the many transitions through the book and today i want to speak about transition courage in transitioning the people of god would need courage in fact god speaks to joshua in this chapter about courage now what is courage courage doesn't mean the absence of fear does it it means that we act in the face of fear this morning i got up as i usually do and i go over my sermon notes and first of all the first thing on my list in the morning is a couple of coffee and trying to wake up so the way I wake up is I turn the television on to just get some outside stimulus. And what was on TV this morning was an old movie from 1969, True Grit, John Wayne. That's the old one, not the remake. And when I took my wife out on our first date, I mentioned that last week. I was a true romantic. It's the first time we ever went out on a date and I took her to the movies. Being the romantic I am, I took her to see True Grit and John Wayne. And it worked. We are married still 47 years. Bless God, it was a miracle. But John Wayne said this about courage. He said, courage is when you're scared, but you saddle up on your horse anyway. Now forgive me if you don't know who John Wayne is. Look him up. Sometimes I'm talking to people of my generation. But courage is this, according to one Greek historian. He says, but the bravest are surely those who have, listen, the clearest vision of what is before them. Glory and danger alike. So they have the clearest vision. They see the glory, but they see the danger and yet notwithstanding, they go out to meet it. Now, there's a lesson for Joshua in the book of Joshua. He does this very thing. He looks out at the glory and the danger of possessing the land, but he goes out to meet it. He's going to need courage to do that. And God's people at Middle River Baptist Church, whatever you are going to look into your future in transition with God as he leads you, and look at the glory and look at the danger, but you have to go out to meet it. And that will require courage. 
God's people need courage in times of transition. So where do you find this courage? Where do you find courage to do what God is calling you to do? Because let me assure you of this. Henry Blackaby used to remind us this in Experiencing God. If you ever took that course, he used to say that God will scare you to death. If you obey God and do what God is calling you to do, it will frighten you sometimes. And I can attest to that very true. If God had told me when I got saved that one day I'd be standing up here doing this, I'd probably pass out and die. God will call you to accomplish tasks that will scare you at times. But to obey Him, you will need courage. And so I want to give you two sources where we can find that courage. Find courage by relying on the Lord's presence, which we've been singing about this morning. God promised to be with Joshua in the same way that he was with Moses. Now look at verse 5. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. In other words, you're going to succeed. What a wonderful promise right up front. God says to Joshua, as you transition into this new land, you will succeed. You won't, you won't fail. He says, and then he makes this wonderful, precious promise just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I won't fail you. I won't drop you. I won't forget about you. I won't forsake you. What a heartwarming promise. Now, it's interesting that this promise was once made in the past to Moses also. Moses was a very reluctant, excuse-making, ask George to do it, not me kind of guy. God came to him and said, I want you to go down into Egypt and deliver my people who are in bondage, and I want you to face Pharaoh. And Moses' response was, in reluctance, he says, can't you find somebody else to do this? You've ever been there before? God, why don't you get them to do it? Why don't you get somebody else? Not me. Don't call on me to do something like that. And what did God say to Moses? I will be with you. Exodus 3.11. But Moses said, who am I? Who am I that I should be able to do something like this and go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? And God said, certainly, I will be with you. And that name, I will be with you, is tied to God's covenant name where God speaks in Exodus 3, 14 and 15 when God said to Moses, what? I am who I am. Tell them I am sent you. The great, eternal, all-sufficient God. God is sufficient. I'm not sufficient. I'm insufficient. I'm inadequate. But whatever my inadequacy is, God says, I am. I am your adequacy. I am your strength. I am your courage. I am your sufficiency. We complain to God, oh God, I don't feel adequate. And I think God says back to us, you're right. You're not adequate. You're insecure. You're fearful. But I'm your courage. I'm your adequacy. I'm your sufficiency. And this is what God said to Moses. And then Moses said this to Joshua in Deuteronomy chapter 31. Moses said to Joshua, God's going to be with you. And now God says it to Joshua himself. I will be with you. A precious, precious promise. Something that Joshua would always be able to count on. Something that you and I and every believer of every generation that are children of Abraham can count on is that God, our covenant-keeping God, that covenant bought with the blood of Jesus Christ for us, God, our covenant-keeping God, says to Middle River Baptist Church, I am with you. So whatever we've got to go out and face, whatever the task is that God is calling, and it's a huge task that's going to scare us, when God says, go and make disciples of all nations, reach this neighborhood for Christ, do you feel adequate? Do you feel sufficient to do that? But God says, I will be with you as you do it. Count on my presence. This is the promise of God to every generation, to Moses, to Joshua, and to the church 
God's missionary church today. Keep your life free from the love of money, Hebrews says, telling us that this is just for the or this promise is just for the ordinary average Joe and Jane Christian of today. And be content with what you have, for he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is the promise right now. God is here. Yahweh is here. He's bigger. He's here. And so he is going to promise his presence. And Jesus said it best of all when he commissioned us to make disciples of all nations. What did Jesus say? Surely, surely, truly, I am with you. Jesus is with us always, even till the end of the age. Christ promised to his missionary church. Now, Mark was referencing C.S. Lewis. Let me read you a quote from C.S. Lewis from Mere Christianity. In speaking of the presence of God, C.S. Lewis said, a car is made to run on gasoline and it would not run properly on anything else unless you have an electric car these days. But back then they probably didn't when he wrote this book. Now he says this, God designed the human machine, that's us, to run on himself. He himself is the fuel our spirits were designed to burn or the food our spirits were designed to feed on. There is no other fuel for us, folks. With everything we've got today, our fuel is God himself. You ever run out of gas? I've done that a couple of times. My wife and I owned a, a van one time, not too long, but it was a gas haul. And we had been out to do, I think I did a wedding renewal of vows on a Sunday afternoon for a couple in Glenmurray. And we were coming home on Route 40. If any of you know where Normandy Shopping Center is, and we're coming up toward Elka City on Route 40. And my wife said, she's looking up my needle, you better stop and get gas. And I said, what the average male I, I said this one time in a sermon. I said, is this just a man thing? Somebody hollered out, no, it's a dumb thing. I said, I'll get gas right over this hill. I knew where the gas station was. She said, well, you just passed one. About that time, putter, 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 going up the hill. Uh-oh. I looked in the rearview mirror, and I'm on Route 40 in Elka City, a very, very populated traveling traffic road. Somehow, I know God parted the Red Sea, but that day there was no traffic coming up 40. And I saw a gas station about 150 yards or so behind me, and I drifted backwards down the road into the gas station up to the pump and looked at her and said, what's the problem? Fill her up. <laughs> Really, inside, inside, I would say, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy. I'd never hear the end of that one. We sometimes seem not to focus on the presence of God, and we run out of gas. The Bible says, be filled with the Spirit. How do you do that? Well, you ask Him, confess your sins, and ask Him, yes. But fill your life up with the things of God and you will be filled with the Spirit. You will be mindful of His presence. You will turn your eyes on Jesus. You see, we need to focus on the presence of God because, you know, when we've got a great, great task to accomplish, what happens is we begin to focus on our weaknesses. And so what we need to do is allow our weaknesses to turn our attention to God. And I believe this is what is happening in Joshua's life at this point. You know, you've got to understand he's filling some big shoes here. Moses, shoes. How'd you like to fill those shoes? Then, then he's got an army that he's going to have to face that's better equipped. They have weapons. They have horses. They probably have chariots. They're trained in warfare. The Israelites are not. There's walled-in cities very difficult to, you need more personnel, you need more troops to take down a walled-in city. We're going to see a walled-in city when we get to Jericho. 
All these obstacles are making Joshua feel weak. And God is using that weakness to turn Joshua's attention to him and his presence. You know what's wrong with us? We're too strong sometimes for God to use. We need to get in touch with our weakness. And our weakness drives us to our need to focus and turn our eyes on the presence of God in the person of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit within us. So if you feel weak, join the club. Join the Joshua club. But focus on the presence of God. And that will generate courage in your life. Our Lord loves to use our weakness to turn our attention to him. So courage, people of God, Middle River, is found by relying on the presence of God. Where else do you find it? Secondly, another source, find courage by responding with obedience to God's written word. Now you see a shift in the history of Israel. They're actually having to use the written word of God, the Torah, the instruction, the law. Understand, Joshua didn't have the 66 books in your canon that you have, but he did have the law of Moses, Torah, instruction. I, my son coached a baseball team, and once they were playing a team in Montgomery County from a Jewish school, and on the front of the uniforms it said, Sons of Torah, Sons of Instruction sons of law. Well, Joshua would have to be wholly absorbed in the law, in Torah, in God's instruction. And here's what he would have to do. Notice in verse 7, God says, be careful to do all according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it. Don't get distracted to the right or to the left. What would Joshua have to do with God's word, Torah? He would have to know it. Now, the word know it is not in the text, but everything else that's explained in the text presupposes knowing it. Because to talk about it and to meditate on it and all this, he would have to know what's in Torah. So Torah, or his Bible at the time, couldn't just be a relic inside the Ark of the Covenant he was going to need to get that thing out and know what's in it. And let us be on the task, church, of knowing God's word. Knowing it and absorbing it into our lives. He would have to talk about God's word. You know, when you talk God's word, you send some good messages to your brain that can help you out. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. I once studied about great awakenings and revivals in the history of our nation on this 4th of July weekend. Our nation needs awakening spiritually. But one of the characteristics I learned when revival does break out, God's people are talking about God's word with one another. They'll be in the halls or in their homes or in their communities and they'll be talking about the Word of God. We seem like we talk about everything else but God's Word sometimes. Talk about it. Meditate on God's Word. God says, but you shall meditate on it, Joshua. You want courage? Meditate on the Word of God. That means to murmur to yourself in a low voice. Orthodox Jews, I was sitting next to an Orthodox Jew on an airplane one time, and he was doing this. The idea is humming under your breath, like you do when you're humming a tune, you know, you get an earworm, you know, you listen to a song, and uh, sometimes I'll listen to a song, and I'll get it in my head, and I start humming it, and it's like an earworm, and you can't get it out. Do that with the Bible. Meditate on the Bible. Internalize it, see, because internalizing, it's like eating food and digesting food it becomes part of you and when you meditate on the word of God it begins to build spiritual muscle and courage in your life I need courage in all sorts of things I'll give you a silly illustration and if you work for a dentist or you are a dentist this is not meant to offend you because the problem isn't with you the problem is with Keith 
when I visit the dentist for the first time and I need to find a new dentist, I fill out the form and I write down there, big chicken. That's me. I am a chicken. Sedate me, do anything, numb me up. I don't care if my lip's hanging down by my shoe. I don't want to feel a thing. Why is it that a dentist will be working on you and talking with you, trying to have a conversation when your mouth is wired up and you got stuff in there and drainage and all this and you're numbed up and they ask you questions. And my dentist said to me one day when she was finishing up a filling, she said, Keith, do you want me to engrave a little cross in your filling? She said, back in the 60s, they used to engrave peace signs. And I said, Arr. what I was saying was, just wrap it up. I want to get out of here. But no joke, I get worked up in the dental chair, and there is a verse of scripture I will repeat in my mind, and it calms me down. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. And that calms me down. I was with somebody about a year ago and they began to panic a little bit like they were going to have a panic attack. And I knew this person well, so I put my hand on their shoulder and I said, that will keep him in perfect peace. His mind has stayed on thee because he trusted in me. He looked at me and he said, you know, that really helped calm me down. Scripture, when you internalize it, will give you courage, will give you peace will give you strength. Be strong and courageous. Meditate on the word of God. And then he says, obey God's word in entirety. Be careful to do it and apply it and live it and live it to the glory of God and then you will have success. Now let's be careful. Success here is not talking about some current day popularity of prosperity, so-called gospel, which is no gospel at all. He's saying to Joshua, if you do everything written in this word, like I instruct you in Torah, and you go into the land and you set your feet in there, I'll give you the land and you will accomplish the task. Now, do we want to accomplish a task for God, the task for God, to make disciples of all nations in this community and all nations? Let's remember we celebrate our nation, but we are a church for the nations. Do we want to do this? Then we must obey everything written in the Word of God to the best of our ability, and He will help us accomplish tasks far beyond what we could imagine. But that courage will come from obedience to the written Word of God. To follow Jesus will require courage. Jesus said, if anyone wishes to come after me, listen, what do you have to do to follow Jesus? You have to deny yourself. You've got to say no to self, to sin, to your selfishness. And you've got to turn your eyes on Jesus. And he says, and take up his cross. What did that mean? They knew what it meant in that day. It meant to take up a cross and die. Be willing to follow Jesus, take up your cross, die to yourself, and follow him. That will require courage. But God will give Middle River Baptist Church transition courage when we focus not on everything else, focus on God's presence and obey his written word and live to his glory and apply his word to our life, and he will bless you. Let's pray. If you're listening today and you've not ever decided to follow Jesus, you may say, well, I don't know what's going to happen if I do that, or I'm, not, I'm worried about what my friends will think. Or, I don't know if I can do it. Turn your eyes, look away from yourself, and look to Jesus Christ today. Our Lord Jesus lived, God so loved that he sent him into this world, he lived a perfect life for you. He took that perfect life and offered it on a cross to die for all of our sins, our guilt, our death. 
and the third day he was raised from the grave. And the Bible says, if you confess Jesus as your Lord and believe in your heart, you have to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Begin that journey of following Jesus. Just pray today and confess him as your Lord. Ask him into your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, save me, forgive me, come into my heart today and begin, help me to follow you. And Lord, we pray today for Middle River Baptist Church and all of us that we will go out and face the task you have for us to be your missionary people. That we will focus more and more so on your presence and on your word and seek to obey your assignments for us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Keith, for that wonderful word. Uh, I pray we will be people that would stay focused on God, absorbed in His presence, uh, bearers of His word, walking in His truth. Um, before we leave this morning, I just have a few announcements uh, for you all. Uh, we are going to have an, an ice cream social, uh, a social distance ice cream social outside after church this morning. We're going to give out prepackaged ice cream, so please uh, stay around for that if you'd like. Um, I also want to let you know that two weeks from now, so the, on the 19th, of July. Uh, that Sunday, we're going to have a special call of business meeting. Uh, on that meeting, we're going to vote on the pastoral search committee. Uh, so the deacons have worked hard to put this committee together based on the names you've given them uh, and, and with the confines and the balances that are required in the Constitution. You'll have a chance to vote on that uh, on July 19th. Oh, if you can put up that slide, there are the names there uh, of the folks that are on that committee. Uh, and that information will be disseminated to you all as well throughout these next two weeks. Uh, so you'll have your chance to vote on July the 19th. Um, also want to remind you, as we're not doing traditional offering in the service, that there will be plates in the back just to drop off your offering, uh, or you can send it into the office or, or do it through our online giving uh, on our website. Uh, I think there's one more thing. What am I missing? Oh, yes, please allow the, the ushers to usher you out as we leave here so we can do our best to stay safe uh, as well. All right, so let's pray as we leave. Uh, dear Lord, again, we thank you for your goodness and your grace, Father. Lord, I thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you for your man of God who preaches your word, Father, that we can understand how important it is to walk in your truth, Father. To be strong and courageous, not because we are strong in and of ourselves, Father, but that you are strong and you are with us, Father. So our courage comes because we walk with you, Father. We are absorbed and we are walking in your spirit, in your presence, Father. You go with us, and therefore, no matter what we face, we can be encouraged. We can be... Uh, Lord, we can be encouraged, Lord, that you are with us, Father. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would not just be hearers of your word, but we would be doers, Father, that as we listen to the word as it's preached and as we read and study, Father, we would walk it out, Lord, uh, so that we can be blessed in what we do, Lord, so that we can accomplish the mission that you have placed before us, Lord. Help us to be obedient sons and daughters, Lord, of you, Father. Uh, so, Lord, I pray a blessing on everyone here in this place, everyone listening and watching, Lord, everyone in this community, Lord, as we go out from this place, Lord, Lord be with us, Lord, guide us, direct us, Lord. We have so many challenges in this season, Father, but we pray you would walk us through it, Father, and we pray that we would stand courageously uh, as sons and daughters of you, Father, as representatives of your word, your truth, and your life, Father. Uh, so we ask these things, we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen.